Hello, welcome to Cosplay Confessional. We're here to explore the who's, how's and why's of cosplayers and the hobby that they love. I'm your host, Kisasa Cosplay, a cosplayer with six years of experience. And I'm Dave. I'm a cosplay enthusiast who's never done a cosplay, so zero years for me. Hi everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Cosplay Confessional. This episode is going to be a little bit different, and you're thinking, what, already? Well, yeah. So, uh, recently had the opportunity to uh, have a live interview with a great cosplayer known as That Ginger Cosplay on Instagram and around, so look her up. Uh, so we're going to talk to her about her origins, her cosplays, her favorite stuff, her sideline activities, uh, but there is a catch, and the catch is that it's just me there because you had other adventures going on, which we are going to hear about plenty of after the interview bit. So stick around after the interview bit to hear all about that, because I believe you unveiled new cosplays. I did. Uh, Yeah, I've managed to throw a few in there since the last time we spoke. Um, So no, it's been good. I've had a good time at a few cons. I was gutted to miss um the first interview but it sounds amazing you know you you guys sound like you talked about some great stuff so i'm really excited to see it and um i'm really excited to be there for the next one yes absolutely so uh before we get into that just to throw it out there to the world that we are looking for others to be involved in our show so if you do want to be on an episode if you want to speak to us about it some more detail and to get yourself here on camera with us uh you can email cosplayconfessional at nerdod.com uh, and that way you can let us know that you want to be a part of this too because we would love to hear from you so without any further preamble from me i'm going to hand it over to me Sorry, I get caught up in the in the beat to it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, Thierry, we're got the Cosplay Confessional, which is our new podcast series on NerdOD, where we talk about the who's, how's, what's, why's of cosplay with those who do it and those who love it. Um, today I've got, I mean, it sounds disrespectful when I use your online handle to introduce you, but that ginger cosplay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that is your name online. It's not just me being rude, but it sounds like it. Thank you for joining today. I want to talk to you about cosplay. I want to talk to you about what you love about it, how you got into it, why it's a part of who you are and what you do. So can we start off with a bit about you? How did you get into it? How did you start? Well, uh, I actually officially started last, you know, in 2020, so July 2020. So I was a lockdown cosplayer. Um, but before then, I didn't know what cosplay was. So in 2016, I dressed up as a doll. So I actually made this door out of cardboard and parcel tape, but I didn't know what cosplay was. I just thought it was really cool to do something different. And I didn't know that this was something I could keep doing. And then when I actually discovered it in lockdown, because it just went mental and everybody was doing it, I was like, I need to do this. This is something I need to do. Um, and I was even just a really quiet person, which is really weird for me to say now. Like, um, so I was really quiet, I was really nervous. So to start it, I was like, right, I'm just doing it. Just sitting in my bedroom, just doing it from the bedroom, you know, doing some random TikToks that I thought, oh, this will be cool. And then here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so the door, I'm, I'm a big fan of the door. So that was the first kind of the time where it was like, this is a, a particular costume on purpose yep. for something. Yeah, yeah. it had a, a purpose of, I just wanted to be different and I definitely was different there was no other doors there (laughs) but it sort of continued on then as well so when I worked at Tesco's I even did dressing up there to do samples of stuff which they absolutely loved and I was like yeah I'm getting paid to (laughs) do these samples in Anna costumes because I'm ginger yes I'll do that (laughs) but yeah it's just sort of gone from there and always loved dressing up as a kid I always remember being in a fish and chip shop as a child, like, and I'm talking like five, dressing up as a dinosaur in their window, just stood in the window, being like, yeah, I'm a dinosaur. And it brought people in. And I, I just loved bringing people in to enjoy it and be like, ha, this is really funny. And this, these were like, yeah, we'll give you free fish and chips for standing there like for like an hour as a five-year-old. And I was like, yeah, this is great. I love this. I love to know the logic about how dinosaurs translates to advertising fish and chips, but that's a... That's I have really no cool. idea. So what's, so outside of the door, what was your first, like, what, what character or, or um, film, TV show, what inspired you to do the next costume? So my first official cosplay was Todoroki from My Hero Academia. Just because I was like, it's easy. It was accessible on Amazon. I could just get everything I needed. 
went the next day and sat. And that's where I started my uh, official journey from. Yeah. <laughs> So generally, when it comes to costumes, are you a are you a, a, a build, a buy? Do you make stuff? Do you assemble stuff? What's your what's your process for costuming? So as a plus size cosplayer, it's actually really difficult to find them that fit buying them. So I do try and buy them, but I also like to do like vintage buys where I'll get like random clothing and match them to get mix them together. Yeah. Um, so that's something I like to do. I do like to make some of them. I can't sew, uh, not a seller. Never will be. Can't keep the concentration to just keep it going straight. Tried sewing a, a skirt and I ended up sewing it so it slip went right up that way and I went, oh, well, I can't use that now. <laughs> I sewed a button once. It's mum and me. Well, oh. well, if you did it well, anyway. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so let's talk about some other costumes. So these ones are ones I'm interested in. Big Star Wars fan. Um, are these ones, what was the idea behind these? Are these characters that you, was it the, the look of the character? Was it the character in the in the media? What was it that made you think, that's who I'm dressing as. Uh, so I've always loved Darth Maul. I always remember my dad having like a Darth Maul money box that I used to play with as a kid. And I was like, I can do that. Why not? And um, I just decided to do it randomly once for Liverpool Con last year, I think it was. Never done it before. Not even really done much face paint. And I just did it. I was like, oh, <laughs> well, that's, that's something we can do now. And then I watched Rebels recently, so I absolutely fell in love with Thrawn, which is the second one up there. Um, yeah, I absolutely love Thrawn as well. I, I kind of have a vibe with characters, clearly. <laughs> I love the idea. I'm just going to throw a cosplay together. I'm just going to paint my whole face red and black. Like, it's no big deal. No, it's like that. And everybody was like, what, wait, what, you've done that without practice? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> just, oops. just sort of did it. Right. I mean, if you can do it, you can do it well. I mean, I... I look at that and I think that's far more work than I would ever put in on anything, like anything in my whole life. So well played to you. Um, so we're talking about costumes. How many costumes do you think you have? How many characters or costumes? Way too many, if that's a good answer. But um, last year alone, I did 40 cosplays. And that's mainly a co- closet cosplays, as they're called, or face paints and stuff like that. So yeah. I did over 40 last year. Oh, wow. I don't know how many I have been totally. <laughs> it's the honest answer to that. If I did 40 last year, I, I have no idea. But the, the list keeps growing as well because there's always a new idea or a new character that I'm like, hey, I could do that face paint. I could do that special effects. I could do this. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, it's just never ending. Do you, do you keep them or is it sort of a once a costume has had its, its, its run out that it gets changed or moved on to something else? Most of them are just normal clothes. I just wear them as normal clothes too. Nice. <laughs> so it's an easy, easy way to just be like, yep, yeah, this is where it goes. Some of them I've had to put in the bin because I like did some building of foam, like my first ever foam build. It's, it's no longer here. <laughs> that was in the bin. Yeah. So I, I put it on for a con and I went to go take it off to put it in the car and it just fell apart. And I was like, well, I didn't do something right there. <laughs> It's that weird balance between a, a cosplay fail being kind of funny, but also tragic because you know the work that's gone in there. So yeah, do you laugh about it? So what about what inspires you to start a new one? Then you talk about closet cosplays and the idea of things that are sort of yeah, at hand and you can get a hold of and you can be brave and think oh, I'm just going to try that. But what when you see something, what makes you kind of go, no, that's the one I want to dress as? Sometimes it's like an instant connection with a character, or it's even something as simple as Stitch. So Stitch, I bought the ears at Megacon that weekend, and then the next day I did Stitch as a con because I was like, "Hey, cosplay!" Because I was like, "I've got a blue dress. I can, I can do Stitch." So, so I just it's whatever comes to my mind, and that's sometimes a lot of stuff. <laughs> does that does that kind of just the bold confidence just drive you through with cosplays? Of just like I can do that. Let's just go. Fake confidence sometimes. <laughs> um, you got to fake it till you make it. Sometimes is sort of how I've always seen it, and. If things don't go right, then that's fine. Like it's just just vibe with it anyway. As long as you're having fun, that's the main point. You know, you you're just there to have fun. You're not there to be impressive or anything else like that. But people still love you dressed up as whatever you want to be dressed up as anyway. Yeah. And is that part of it? Like you think when you go to a convention or or to any kind of event and you're dressed that way, you get people that come up to you and say, "Oh, wow, your character's amazing," or "That looks great." Do you still get that kind of that buzz of I've done this and this is mine, even if that weren't there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that I also get very overwhelmed with people coming up to me. I, it, it 
does actually very overwhelm me and scare me a lot of the time because I'm like, I've done a character that not many people know. And then 10 people come up to me and be like, oh my God, that character is amazing. I love that character. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, so it's, it's really nice to actually see the love for different characters and some characters getting some appreciation that they don't usually have as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that people getting sort of photographs of cosplayers and, and the sort of outpouring of emotion when a character means something to somebody. Yeah. Um, and I imagine on the receiving end of that, that could be quite intense. I had a child cry when I was in Stitch really? meeting me. I was like, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hi. <laughs> like, but you know, that, that means so much to a child. You could be dressed as Spider-Man, which is their favourite character. You could be dressed as anything. And literally... They, they love it, and you could be the simplest thing ever and not put much effort into it sometimes, and people do really like it. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned before about the idea of, of being plus size and being sort of proudly, like, that's part of who you are and you acknowledge that. How important do you think that is in cosplay, which is so much of the time it's about appearance and it's about how you're dressed and how you look? Yeah, how important do you think it is keeping that mindset? I think it's really important. You get a lot of hate being plus size. Um, so you just got to pile through it, put all the filters on of the hit that you're going to get, like put it on, because you, you, you can filter out words on Instagram and stuff like that. You will get hit. It's one of the things in cosplay. People think you've got to be perfect, but you really don't need to be. As long as you're having fun, doesn't matter what you, you what other people think of you. You've just got to keep going and keep doing it for yourself yeah. and just having fun with it. Because you imagine there's a number of people who maybe don't get into it because they have that kind of, how are people going to react to me? Well, I have a lot of people that are like, oh, I could never do that because, you know, people would be like, I'm I'm too big for that character, for example. And I'm just like, hey, if you like the character, do it. Like, just, just get in there, do it. Even if you're doing it for yourself, you're dressing up as your favorite character at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter what anybody else's opinions are against that. It's your character and it's you. That's the main part. I'm right, thinking you also, positivity is a big part of who you are and, and what you do. And you've got your own brand that focuses on that as well. I have, yes. Um, so I have a brand called The Laughing Ginger Co. So anybody that actually does know me, I laugh a lot and my laugh's very loud. Um, but my laugh did get silenced a lot when I was younger. That was through bullying and people just being negative all the time. And I just, you, there's so many different things that contributed to me being not me, basically. And through cosplay, it helped me find myself again. It helped me find my laughter that probably everybody can hear. My best story on the laughter is someone could echolocate me in the car park of last year's Megacon because I laughed that loud. It echoed through and they could follow the laughter and that's how they found me. I was like, oh. <laughs> but it's the brand is focusing on people's mental health and body positivity um, it, so it's always stuff like you're enough, you're always worthy, you deserve good things because those are all true. We've just sometimes got to remind ourselves of that, whether that's reminding the person behind you or whether that's reminding yourself when you're wearing that as well. So what's the kind of what's the message? I mean, you've, you've, there's a lot of good stuff you said so far about sort of belief and, and loving the character and doing your own thing. But what's the message to someone who is on the verge of, of starting to get into cosplay because that's the thing, I think that people might see that as the block, like people who, who are um, affected by that, and everyone is to whatever degree. But yeah, how do you get them to overcome that and, and start the journey, right? I think it's just take the small steps. My smallest step of me officially cosplaying was buying a wig and shoving it on my head. And that was, that's a cosplay, that, that was the start of my official journey, because I knew what the name was then. <laughs> I just liked to dress up before that. Yeah. Um, but just start the small steps start with something that makes you comfortable. Whether that's you sitting in your bedroom, having a laugh, shoving a wig on your head. You know, that's that's how I started. I started so small, started so simple. And it's grown into this absolute love and passion and something that's my creative outlet. My job isn't creative. So this is my time to be creative. It's my time to enjoy myself. It's time to just let go of everything. So you might as well take that leap and let go of everything. Don't think about what so-and-so is going to say, what your work colleague is going to say. No, just think about what you're going to feel in that moment. You're going to feel so much joy and happiness. You might feel overwhelmed. I still feel overwhelmed. But you'll 
feel so much better for it and it helps a lot of people come out of the shell it gets you confident it helps you become a better person in a way you know you're hanging around with new friends you're making new friends you're always socializing but it's just that feeling you've got you wear one item and you're like i'm that character or i'm not that character but i'm that character in a wig so that's sometimes how i view myself i don't go into the whole character role because too much of a strong Yorkshire accent for that. <laughs> it doesn't really work for all these like cutesy kawaii ones when I'm like, hey lad, you're right. <laughs> That's the dub that everyone's looking for, right? That's what we want to say. So, so how big is how important is the community aspect? Because you're talking about that, and we see in the number of cosplayers that we do, and the events that we come to, and the, the way people make those kind of connections based on their characters and the effort that goes into it. How, how do you see that? Uh, the community as a whole is look like this. Not very good eggs in the community, but there's never a perfect set of people anywhere you go. But the people you find that there are the good eggs, they, they're like stars and they make your day brighter. Everything shines better and you just become a better person when you go to these social aspects and you're just having fun rather than going somewhere that's like work and you just sort of dragging your feet along or anything else. We're all nerds that just play dress up at the end of the day. So, speaking of the dress up, let's talk about your most elaborate cosplay. What have you got? I have many. Um, I think my most elaborate has to be Maul. It has the saber, it has the face paint that everybody talks about. I personally don't think it's that elaborate, <laughs> as ironic as that sounds, but the makeup takes me an hour to do, and less every time I do it. So, I've done it three or four times now. But it gets like the biggest reaction because they're like, oh my god, that's Maul. Um, and it's it's just a different mall as well. It's not the same mall that has the ball cap because I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and try and glue things to my head. I can't do that. <laughs> Don't the patience for it. Um, but I like to do stuff. Uh, so I'm actually allergic to latex. So any scar work I do is from eyeshadow. Um, so that one took me three hours wow. to do. <laughs> so. Um, a lot of, and I had to do it blind because you've got to put contacts in before you do makeup. So I was half blind doing that one. So that, to me, is my personal elaborate one. But everybody else thinks it's small. And so the flip side of that, what's your what's your easiest cosplay? Your most maybe not most comfortable because I always think about comfy cosplay being an important category. But like, what's your easiest one to work out? Any that's got natural hair colors. So any that's ginger is the easiest. But my easiest is Velma. Yeah. Because it's my own glasses. I don't need to put contacts in. I don't I don't need to do anything. It's just straight up my own glasses. I'm just vibing with it then basically. Yeah. And what's the what's next? What what's what next character have you got lined up? Have you got a a, a plan there or uh, for a con next weekend I'm doing a pink and purple dark more because our aesthetic is pink. <laughs> I know that I don't own pink cosplays, really. Apart from Jiggly Bug, which I'm doing on the Saturday. So I was like I just put it up as a poll. I was like what, what shall I do? Shall I do Piglet? Shall I do Patrick Star? Or do I do a pink and purple Darth Maul? And that got on the spot. So I'm doing a pink and purple Darth Maul next weekend. <laughs> That's going to be interesting, yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing is, is what's, the, what's the dream cosplay? Like, not one you've necessarily got planned, but one you think if, if one point the stars align and you could do it, that's the one you'd wear. Spyro. 100% Spyro. I tried making Spyro many a times, and I sort of either stopped halfway through because I forget about it. <laughs> or another idea pops in the head and I just roll with that one instead and I'm like, oh, this one new. Uh, but I would love to get a spiral with full wings that move and everything. I I would like to get there eventually. That would be quite something. <laughs> Whenever I see like, cosplays that have like moving parts, that's the bit that blows my mind yeah. because I, I can't sew a button. I've never been any good with paints. Like the idea of building actual animatronic stuff almost is like what for a convention okay i always find it really exciting to see people who are passionate about what they do and whether it's the, the cosplay whether it's the the character or that kind of stuff it's that it's that idea of the inspiration like what inspires it um and i always wonder with cosplay is there is there a connection to the character a connection to the film a con like a, a different message you know what we've spoken about previously as well and where do you think that is that that inspiration, what has to come together for you, for you to say, yes, I'm going to be that character? It could be anything, but most of it is just a thought of, well, I can do that. Let's try it. So 
the um, the one where I'm like half blind it's Wrecker from Bad Batch obviously it's my own hair because I was like I'm not going bald um, but I just loved the character it's a stupid character that's great um, I usually drift towards absolutely crazy characters that just it wouldn't make sense anywhere else um, so it's that's sort of where the inspiration comes from me is just when they're just either like crazy as you know overpowered or like thrown where his mind is just amazing um it i just love stuff like that so if i have an instant connection in that sense i'm like yep cool cosplay the idea now <laughs> do you collect them have you got a big list of ideas of things that are coming up or is it very much in the moment it, it's definitely a in the moment kind of thing and then it's like right let's sort it now <laughs> That's interesting. You talk about Wrecker, like the idea of that that cosplay with a twist. Like, are there many that you do that are, you know, the pure character, or do you think you apply a bit of a twist to most of them, or is that a conscious choice? I think it's. I think I don't actually do the original character because I don't want to do a male version, and I tend to grab to it more towards the male characters. But I might add, they'll just stick away. Don't know if I end up a female, but the, the female now. <laughs> So everything's female. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just that way. I hope I can't bothered. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I, I think that that's what I see with the characters, that the, the, the twist that people put on them, that kind of where is that, that personal element that still makes it, you know, that person, but in a cool costume too. Um, whereas the flip side is people who do that sort of the full transformation into screen accurate. Oh, in yeah, it. They, they blow my mind. I'm just yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Um, no, thank you. That is, um, that's, that's all my questions. So I had a little list there to come all through. Um, but, but thank you for talking about it. I think it's something that I always wonder how that process works, like how someone gets from, oh, that's kind of a cool thing to showing up at a convention in the costume with the work and whatever you've done. So, um, thank you for that. And I look forward to seeing what else you got going on next. Yeah. And, Thank you all for watching. Uh, that's the end of this now. If you want to check out more, Cosplay Confessional is uh, on Nerd OD. You can find us uh, anywhere you can get your podcasts, anywhere you can get your videos. We are out there on a table for the rest of the weekend as well. But thank you for your time. It's been great talking to you. Thanks a lot. All right, so that was an amazing first guest. Um, so I'm really gutted that I couldn't be there um, because, like, what a great chat you guys had. I loved all the stuff about body positivity. That's like not really something I feel like I touched on last episode, but that is such an important aspect to cosplay, I think. And I feel like Ginger really covered that really well. Um, so I feel like that's that's a great message um, there for the cosplay community. And also that dream cosplay project i was very much on board with i feel like spyro was such a part of my childhood um we literally <laughs> just restreamed um the whole like original trilogy we replayed i've not played it in years and yeah i i need to see that if she does that so <laughs> keep me keep me updated on that fingers crossed that fingers sounds, crossed it's gonna happen that sounds amazing if that yeah. turns out so very yeah. cool well you were missed uh, but I say next time, next live show, you're definitely going to be there. So let's yes. talk about what what took you away from us. What exciting things that you had going on? So so where did you go? Who did you see? Who did you dress as? Well, yeah. So um, I've done a bit of conning myself. So uh, just last this weekend, just gone. Um, I was at AmeCon. Um, so it's in um, it's in Coventry at uh, Warwick Arts Centre. So Warwick Uni which is in Coventry, which is very confusing. I'd no, booked it. Felt it's not like good for my geography there. <laughs> um, so I nearly caught a train to Warwick, but I ended up in the right place. Uh, never done the con before, but I'd heard good things from some friends of mine. Um, and yeah, it was a really good weekend. Very different from any other con I've done before. It was just a really different atmosphere. It was sort of more... Like there were panels, there were quizzes, there were parties. It was like, it just was a completely different, different sort of con, which took like the first day to get into it because mm -hmm. I was like, it's everyone, everyone's so spread out and it's just really mm -hmm. weird. It wasn't that whole people stop you and take photos and there's photographers and stuff. It wasn't yeah. really like that. Okay. Um, but it was just such a nice chill weekend and got to bring out some new cosplays, which was super exciting. So there were a few I'd been wanting to do for a while, but um, 
I wanted to do them with friends. So it was like syncing up when we were all going to be there. And this just ended up being the perfect weekend for a couple of new ones. So I did um, Abbey from the Quarry. So a little bit niche. Um, so it's a uh, super massive games, um, like a choice based uh, horror game that I played this year. A lot of my friends were into it and everybody said, I do quite like a choice based game. I like a story based thing. Mm-hmm. Um, played it, really enjoyed it. She's one of the characters in it. Um, and we had like a little mini group going on. So that was really fun for one of the evenings. Um And then I also did um, a Rachel Amber cosplay from Life is Strange. So Mm -hmm. I already do a cosplay from that. Um, But this is another character. And my friend, Tony, who I was there with, I usually cosplay with her. But she didn't know I was doing this cosplay. She thought I was cosplaying the other character from it, who I normally do. So that was a a, a fun time because we were staying together and like literally we were nearly ready. She had like knocked on my door like, oh, can I just come in for whatever? And I was like, bam. (laughs) She was like, yeah. (laughs) What's really great with that one is, and again, I mean, we've spoken before about that game and that's one that's on my list I need to play. Um, You do. I really really enjoyed how this uh, character looks like like the the costume is not it's not I, I I've seen you in 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 more elaborate cosplays and more but it it seems so significantly different to the other one and I can't really place my finger on why but it just seemed like you tell me it's from the the same property and I'm looking at it going but you're a totally different person in that one and I think that's a really cool thing in how you cosplay where you do lend yourself to suddenly looking quite different and and we've mentioned before usually it's, it's down to the hair the hair always throws me. Um, but no, I really, I really hair, enjoyed this one. The hair yeah. is key. Yeah. Um, but no, I really enjoyed it. Um, it it worked, sort of. I hoped it would work. I'm very much a fly by the seat of my pants kind of cosplayer, so I'd not tried on either one of the cosplays in full before the con, which is very standard for me. <laughs> it's very rare that I've ever done like a. I'm like, what is a cos test? What what is this you speak of? <laughs> Like, I literally stress my friends out so much that, like, I don't know how you can live that way, but I don't know. It's just I've got to this point now in my life, and that's just the way I operate. So I was crossing my fingers on the morning that it, it worked, and it did. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I enjoyed seeing it all together for the first time, which was when everyone else saw it for the first <laughs> time. So I was just as surprised as everyone else, pretty yeah. much. Um, it's really interesting, too, because you mentioned, like, the idea of choice-based games. Now, it's a... Uh, sideline i've recently started playing the uh, telltale games uh, the expanse series which okay if you, if you like the series the expanse it's amazing if you like telltale games story-based games they're it's fantastic which and i it's do the, you should play this one it's amazing but i'll talk to you about it more afterwards uh, <laughs> but it's a um one of the few things where i thought it's something i'd quite like to cosplay is a character yeah. from that from that show but the problem is a lot of the costumes in that show are very just utilitarian things that you could just wear but they wear them in space yeah. so it's a tricky one where i'd probably just look rather comfortable in some kind of flight suit or boiler suit but only if you notice the yeah. patch or the thing on the back would it be like oh it's a it's a cosplay and not just a mechanic who's wandered in to the convention so no i get that and i've had that to be fair i've had a similar not well not quite the boiler suit but i've had a similar thing with a lot of sort of considerations that i've had of cosplay and stuff is i love this thing i'd love to be someone from it but then you just think where's the line between this just looks like i'm someone in normal clothes and this really looks like the the cosplay uh, or the person and for me the line is usually a prop (laughs) yeah that's the that's how i usually but there's been a lot of things that i've kind of thought oh i'd love to but then i i just don't know how to make it distinctive enough yeah. and I think you know some some cosplayers I know and hopefully we'll get some of these guys on as guests um you know they've really really skilled with the makeup like the contouring um really skilled in the wig styling and that mm. and, and I think for those kind of people it's it's easier for them to do that kind of cosplay because if you have like the makeup and the hair absolutely spot on then you can go more down that road but i think that i'm not saying i'm like 
terrible at those things, but it, I wouldn't say I have like a remarkable skill for makeup and, and hair. Sure. So that yeah. kind of, that informs my choice a little bit to be like, okay, well, it needs to be something that on the surface of it is a little bit more distinctive or has a really distinctive prop. So yeah. I'd love to talk to some of those people who have those skills that mean that they can just be that person because i find those people amazing yeah so and, and speaking of prop did, hit us did, up. <laughs> <laughs> we need your makeup skills um did did abby have a, a key prop she didn't and i was really, really? disappointed in myself well wow. see what she needed was a torch i see really, okay. okay because it's set without boring you it's basically like they're all they're all like camp counselors at an american like okay. summer camp and then it turns out that weird stuff goes down so it's kind of just like they're wandering around the woods at night and then there's creepy stuff happening so yeah i feel like a torch would have been i see that would have been the move i'm not sure so it's the game for time, me you know i get, I get creeped out have a torch. I get creeped oh, out by no. the dark in the woods in real life, let alone in a actual creepy environment in a game. I don't know. I don't there know are there are definitely some like jumpy bits. Yeah. So. Well, we'll, uh, mm, we'll see. Maybe we'll not. See. I I definitely have a friend who's like, no, <laughs> this is not for me. <laughs> um. So yeah, may, yeah, maybe not. Maybe you need to stick to the expanse. I mean, saying that that it's pretty dark that property too. But hey, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Starfield's coming out soon. That's all I need anyway. Um. <laughs> Uh, again, space. So, what's the what's next on the on the cards? What's the what's the next con? What's the next costume? Um. So next for me, um, next definite is London, uh, nice. London MCM, um, which has been a little bit controversial this year. I feel um, mm. in that a lot of people that I know are sort of starting to consider whether to go, whether to not go. Mm. um you know london's expensive i get it um at least this year i'm still hanging in there and i'm going for it i think it's going to be a bit of a smaller group of us but um so looking forward to that so i'm hoping to do two new cosplays for it okay um so it's a three day so i'm going to be there all three days so well so i'm two new ones and then one that i've already done but that i've never taken to a con so it's okay. quite like a I guess it'll be quite a, if I can touch wood, if I can do it, it'll be yeah. quite a new, I just want to call myself out or congratulate myself at this stage, <laughs> because when the last episode came out, I talked about the fact that I wanted to do a Detroit cosplay and I did actually do it. I, when hey. I was saying it, I was like, we'll see. And then it came out and I was like, I did it actually in time for the con that I said I was going to do it for. So I was quite proud of myself on that one. Well, I, I'm so I'm sure. going to hope that this is also a successful prediction yeah. of what's Man, going to manifestation, right? You're, yeah, exactly. You're, you're bringing it into existence by so declaring this, it here on the podcast. So I'm hoping to manifest this. Um, so I want to do, so the new, the one that's not been to a con is uh, Liv from iZombie. Okay. Um, so she's a zombie. Um, <laughs> lab coat, very pale, blonde hair. I've seen um, your, your photos of Liv. I didn't realize you'd never taken her to a con before. No, literally just did it in, Lockdown, took some right. photos in my kitchen. That's the only time <laughs> I've ever had it on. Um, so I need to work a little bit on the makeup because I kind of had some pale makeup, but it wasn't great. And definitely every time I post those, I definitely put a filter on it. <laughs> that makes me look a bit paler. So I'm like... Makeup artist, hit us up. You know what <laughs> Yeah. Somebody hit me up for zombie makeup. Um, so I'm hoping to take her because obviously it's in October. So kind of a spooky cosplay well it's not it's not a scary show but she's a yeah, zombie it she's a zombie sense. it's close enough um and then new ones i want to do one from dragon ball z um so android 18 from dragon ball z so yeah. i used to watch that when i was a kid um loved it um my brother who started going to cons with me recently wants to do android 17 so they they are like brother and sister in the show so i'm like okay. it's She'll be kind of cute. And we both yeah, used cool. to watch it together as kids. So hopefully that one. And then also I want to do Veronica from Heather's, the musical. Okay. So very different. Um, but I went to see that uh, a few months ago at the theater and absolutely loved it. Um, I've been like big into the theater lately. Like I've been a lot this year and absolutely loved that. I feel like it's had a bit of a wave. Like I've seen quite a few Heather's cosplayers at cons. Okay. 
Um, so I'm probably like a little bit late to the party, but I loved it. And it's it's kind of like a bit school uniformy, like a but blazer. You will bring and... a key prop. That's the difference. I we will. I will we bring a key prop. I will. <laughs> so oh, they will all three will have props. Um, for Liv, I'm thinking she has a brain, but I'm also want to get some like sweetie brains that I might like hand out to people at con <laughs> if they recognize me. So nice. spoiler alert, come to me, get a, get a gummy brain <laughs> at London MCM. Uh, so that's the next sort of confirmed con. And those are hopefully the plans. So nice. Well, all, as always, we look shall forward see. to it massively. Um, <laughs> will you be at London MCM? Tell me you will. I would like to be. So let's let's give it a firm maybe. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll love a firm maybe. So yes, thank you for that. I think that is a uh, an exciting glimpse of what's to come. And also earlier in the episode, what has already happened. Um, so uh, again, like mentioned before, if you want to be involved in the show or if you want to let us know your thoughts on cosplay, uh, you can hit us up uh, at Cosplay on Instagram, Olson Prime on Instagram or cosplayconfessional at nerdod.com. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching with us, and we will see you later. See you soon. Cosplay Confessional is part of the Nod Network and produced by Studio 30,000.